Well, hey, Bethel Church, so glad that you are joining in with us, most likely on YouTube right now. And today it's me, Pastor Carlo, and I have the legend, Pastor Charlie, with us here for this week's Table Talk. Now, it's been a few weeks since we've been able to do one of these, and I'm glad that we get to sit down today yep. and do it. Um, of course, we can't be crazy socially distanced, but uh, you know we've sanitized beforehand, and we're not sharing a microphone, and we got our masks on, so we're doing the whole thing. But anyways, today we're talking about something really, really interesting, really special that, Pastor Charlie, I've been told that you are a, uh, a bit of a... Um, how would you say, like a professor on it? Like very, <laughs> I'm, I'm, the point I'm trying to say is you've been real knowledgeable about this subject and I'm really excited to hear more about it this morning. So uh, Pastor Charlie, talk to me about Lent. That's what we're talking about today. So what's Lent all about? Okay, it's cool. Well, first of all, Carlo, Lent is not found in the Bible. It, it, it's a tradition. Okay. But for years, John Patterson and some others, along with myself, we have been responsible for hosting a Lenten lunch series. And Lent is all about interesting. Interesting is that Lent starts on Ash Wednesday. Guess what? Today, Today. is Ash Wednesday. Okay. Lent is a season of 40. It's 40 days leading up to Easter Sunday. So the, 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 the idea, especially in traditional churches, that Lent is this this preparation time where people are focused. They're giving up something for 40 days. So they prepare their heart, their, their, their soul, and, and their mind for to celebrate the greatest event, not only in history, but the greatest event in our universe, and that is the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus yeah. Christ. So, so are you, have, you, have you been familiar with Lent? You ever heard that before? Uh, from some other traditions, like I know that I've had friends or family in Catholic tradition, yeah, uh, kind yeah, of that sect yeah. of Christianity that's been like a regular practice. And maybe you at home that are watching it, maybe this is something that somebody watching has participated in before. Or, But I like what you said. It is not just uh, a, something that's a, a scriptural uh, you know, law to do, but it's kind of... It's kind of this tradition that's practiced amongst a variety of Christians, I guess you could say. Um, and maybe for you at home, I, I think of like, so do you have to be a Catholic to, you know, to practice the tradition of Lent? Like to participate in Lent, do you have to? And what you're saying today yeah, is, no, no, you don't. No, no. Uh, you know what? This is where I think some of our, our uh, evangelical, charismatic Pentecostal churches, we, we kind of miss that. Mm. Where, where some of our mainline church friends who, who have a liturgical calendar, uh, a liturgy that they follow, uh, this, this is a reminder to them, whether it's Lent, whether it's Advent, and we went through that back yeah, at Christmas time, yeah. and it, we can find that there, there is a richness, there is something gleaned during this time. But I think the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, um, point that, that I take away from whether it's Advent or whether it's, whether it's Lent uh, or Epiphany, you hear these different terms that we're just not used to, I, I find that they prepare us for mm. something. And, and I sense, as we, we talk about Lent for this year, and that first weekend in April is coming up, and I love this because it gets my heart ready. If anything, I found out when I used to be preparing on a regular basis year after year, I know, here comes Easter. You got Good Friday, and, and then you know, you know the story of Easter. Mm. Well, I, you know, I find I kind of, it was like cramming for a test. Right. It's yeah. all, all, here's that. Here, I've got to get ready for this Easter weekend. With Lent and being involved in that Lenten lunch series, I found for 40 days, I, my mind and my heart and my soul we're being sensitized to the, the great price that the Lord Jesus paid mm. for you and I so that we could celebrate his resurrection and experience his resurrection in our life. If there's anything that changes a life, it's an encounter with a resurrected right. Christ. That's right. So, so Lent, let's get back to that. Ash Wednesday starts the day. Um, Lent is, is this whole thing of getting us ready. And, and, and scripture is all about that. You think about, think about Noah. 
he, he was building an ark, and it took him hundreds. It wasn't just a few days. I mean, it was hundreds of years. He must have had some gnarly calluses. <laughs> in his hand. I think about the hammers. I can't imagine. After you know an hour putting together a box in my backyard, my hands are like destroyed. Yeah, I mean, build a whole boat. I that's don't know. right. <laughs> I mean, people must have thought he was crazy, but but all the time Noah knew in his heart that God was preparing him for something. And really, it was the, for the salvation of the world. Right. That's really what it was. Whether, and then you think about Noah, or you think about Joseph, and, and Joseph went on a journey, and it, it was disappointing, it was frustrating for him, it was very hurtful, but it was a journey that prepared him to be um, like, a, like a savior for the, that known world because of the incredible uh, uh, famine yeah. that, that took place. So what I sensed, for us this day, as we think about Lent in 2021, is that it's a, it's a, there's a message here. And that message is, is that God wants us to get ready. Does he want us to get ready for Easter? Oh, yes, he does. Does he want us to do introspection during this time? Yes, he does. But I really believe that God is getting his church ready for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The New Testament example. Of, of preparing the way was John the Baptist. Right. Let, me, let me read this scripture. It's found over in Mark chapter 1, and it was describing the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and it says this, the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And those were words that were describing John the Baptist, because John was preparing the way for the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so, with, with the thought of Lent and, and, and Easter happening this year, I, I, I just sense, with so many things going on in our world, and in, in North America, uh, in our government, there's all kinds of concerns. and There's, there's a special time of prayer emphasis right now while, while you and I are talking. Uh, and what is that all about? It's all about Holy Spirit preparing us, preparing our heart. And I believe it is preparing our hearts for a fresh outpouring, if not perhaps the most significant outpouring of the, the Holy Spirit. So, I, man, Lent's an exciting time. So I have, I have a thought and a question. Oh, good. I didn't know it would, but I do now. <laughs> um, okay, good. How does one practically participate in Lent? So now we know a little bit of the history of it. You know, you've, you've, you've given us some really great insight today about, you know, what it is for. So thinking future of like, you know, this is about God wanting to prepare and do something in your heart that's to come. So how does, how does somebody for these next 40 days participate in Lent? If they're watching at home right now and they're like, I like that, I want to jump on board. Because I even know people, friends and colleagues of mine that are not Christians. Like they don't even believe in God and they practice Lent. And it's not necessarily for Easter, but there's, there's something about it that is actually really, really important and healthy to us. And that's, that's good for us. So like, what if maybe you could tell us some of the, the ways that you've practiced Lent over the years, or maybe some friends you know that have practiced Lent. Like, what are the different ways that people can involve themselves in this tradition? Well, you know, Lent is a very, get this, listen to this word. Lent is a very confrontational word. It means you got to give up something. One of the central messages that Jesus taught was that you got to take up your cross and follow me. Like a rich young ruler comes and he thinks he's got it. He's got the right answers and everything. He's got too much money. And then Jesus says, all you have to do is just give it up and follow me. And he couldn't do it. And, and Lent confronts the distractions in our life. If, if there's anything that causes us to miss out on the significance of this moment is distractions. I just read the other day in that series we're in with Pete Scazzaro. He talks about we need to savor the sacred. And he talks about savoring the sacred moment. And right now you and I are in a moment and we need to savor it. And the way that we do it is by getting rid of distractions. So in answer to your question, what, what Lent is, let's give up something 
that, that causes us, you know, the distractions to be minimized. You know, one of the things that really, uh, that I felt God speaking to my heart on was giving up watching the six o'clock news. Mm. Man, I've been a news addict. I mean, I just got to watch it and, and watch it. And sometimes I'll watch from six to six thirty, and then I'll watch from six thirty to seven. And sometimes it's the same thing. And I got so bad at one time I was watching at five thirty, going to six, and then from six to six thirty. It's kind of a rehash. And and you know what? I just really felt that one of the things that God wanted me to give up in this, this, this season of Lent and, and time of fasting was give up watching the news and devote that time for a quiet time so that I could hear more clearly what the Holy Spirit. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's good. Is that we hear more clearly. So whatever that is, it, it could be anything. So there seems like there's some layers or similarities between, and I got I to gotta throw this out there. I'm so glad that Lent doesn't mean lentils. The last, <laughs> Pastor Charlie, the last thing I wanted to eat tonight for dinner was lentils. Lentils, For the yeah. next 40 days, my dad would be all over that. He loved it... lentil soup. <laughs> never once. That spoon would never touch my mouth. No, I don't. Anyways. I don't blame you. I hear you, man. I'm with you. <laughs> but le- Lent seems like it has some similarities and uh, things, yeah, just some th- things that are similar in the idea of fasting and, and Lent. There seems like there's, you know, fasting is about... You know, starving your body to speak to feed your spirit, like to to give up something and replace that with a time of uh, with time with Jesus, like whether that be giving up the news or or giving up a meal or going multiple days without eating. And um, there seems like there's some similarities to Lent and fasting. Any thoughts on that? Oh, yeah, definitely, uh, because they, they do do work to, together. Because the season called Lenten, they call it the Lenten season. Really, it is about doing something with, with the flesh. As we think about Christ, and, and Christ, our supreme example, he gave up what? He gave up, his, he gave up his divinity. He gave up his eternal form in heaven to come and take on, take on flesh. Do hmm. so you think that was easy? I mean, <laughs> come on, think about that. Yep. I mean, the God of the universe, the God that, man, I've seen pictures of the earth and out there, and the God holds the universe right there. He holds planet Earth right there in his hand. And that the God, Jesus Christ, who was God, Spirit, came, came flesh. He gave up so that you and I might have life. And it, it, I think that's the message. We, we, we give up. And, and Yeah, give up a meal. It, it's good. And if, if you can't give up, you know, give up some, just go on fluids or something. There's all kinds of things that we can yeah. do to deny our 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 fleshly appetites or those desires that kind of stand in the way. And, it, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to be healthy for, healthier for it. Uh, uh, and you know what? You're going you're gonna to hear God speak mm. to you in some very, very beautiful ways and gentle ways. That's good. So it makes me think, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we had started the EHS series, um, we had actually put out this initiative to the entire church about fasting um, for the whole EHS series. So, if, if you are participating in that in a small group and you've been, you've been fasting and you've been feeling the struggle, welcome to the team. Hop on the bus like the rest of us. But this is a time where God is going to do something miraculous in your life. When you, when you, begin, to, uh, when you begin to starve your flesh, and right. I don't, I'm not even just talking about food, but that is clearly a main principle in the Bible about giving up food um, when, you're, when you're fasting. Um, when you starve your flesh, so those are the things that like you crave that in right. a sense, sometimes right. we don't want to admit, right. but we could be addicted right. to. Okay. Right. Here's my confession today. Cause we're talking about Catholicism and stuff. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Priest right. Charlie. I'm, I'm just kidding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I am addicted to pop. I love Coca-Cola oh. so much. Okay. I love it so much. So instead of drinking pop, I've been drinking, um, uh, like not soda water, but like uh, like sparkling water, car- carbonated water, and oh yeah, okay, okay, it, I know where you're going now. I haven't yeah. had I haven't had a thing of pop in a while, and every time that I see somebody else drink pop, I'm like, oh my flesh just cringes. <laughs> he goes, Carlo, you need that sugar. It's so good. It's so tasty. Yeah. Uh, fries yeah. and a burger would so yeah. go, so great yeah. with that. So we know at home that uh, you are participating in this fast, and you might be feeling the pain a little bit. Um, but we also want to pray for you. So if you didn't know, there's actually a button on our website. So at, 
If you just go to BethelStratford.org, the very first thing at the top on the home page, there's a button there that you can click to fill out a form to let us know as pastoral staff and mainly Pastor Chad what you're fasting for. And we want to partner together and actually pray for you on this journey. And Because fasting is not actually, I don't really see a lot of principles in, in the Bible that talk about trying to be a Christian by yourself. And I think that's, fasting is included with that. Yeah. So don't try and, and practice fasting or Lent by yourself. Let us know. And it's not to boast to be like, no. you know, standing on the corner on a pedestal going, look what right. I gave up. Like right. Jesus says, don't do that. It's, it's pretty clear in the New Testament. But, you know, we want to partner with you. So go ahead and go to BethelStratford.org, click on that button, fill out that Google Doc, and let us know so that we could pray for you. And you can be discreet with it. You don't that's have to right. let us know every bit of information. But if you haven't yet, please do that. Hey, and you know what? There's not this timeline on fasting. So even though today is Lent, maybe you're not watching this until tomorrow or maybe Sunday exactly. afternoon. Right. That's okay. Just because you miss a day or the first few days doesn't mean that you can't hop right. on and participate and maybe go a little bit longer. That's right. I think the whole point is that Jesus wants to spend more time with you. He wants you to have a more open schedule for him. And don't let anything get in the way of that. So if you're watching this today and you're, you're not part of the, the fasting journey that we're on, start today. If you don't watch this till a few days from now, that's okay. Hey, if you've been fasting and then this is a reminder that you should be fasting and you've forgotten about it, hey, there's no shame in that. Just start over today. You know, God's graces are new every single morning. But I've, I've loved this conversation. I feel like I've, I've, I've learned and I've leaned so much from you about Lent. Cool. Cool. Um, so th- is any last words, any well, final thoughts? You know, I mean, the beauty of Lent, I mean, because sometimes we're talking about giving up stuff and it's so tough. Yeah. You know, you think about, you know, oh, I don't know if I can do this or whatever. We know the end of the story. Right. We know what happens at the end of Lent. I mean, it, it, it comes up to the worst day, worst day. Everything looks like shattered. It's done. It's over. Everybody's running, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and, our, and our hero is on a cross He's gone. What do we have left? But then we know what happens. We know what happens. There comes Sunday morning. There comes, there's, there's an earthquake. The stones rolled away. And the great news is that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has risen. And we have that, that, that same resurrected power that lives within us. And I think that's the good news, is that at the end of this, God has something great in store for us. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Hey, Charlie, thank you so much for sharing with us this morning um, about this tradition. And I, I, sometimes the word tradition has some bad connotation yep. kind of attached to it. Yep. Um, but I don't feel that at all with this conversation. Oh, I, I think good. Lent is a great thing for us to participate, sure. to learn more about, and uh, just to adapt into our, our life yearly. And th- more and more, actually, I've been interested in learning about the liturgical side of our faith yep. and some of yep. the importances of that, that may be in a, a charismatic kind of sect of Christianity. Yeah. We, we tend to maybe not emphasize as much or forget about or even sometimes ignore, if I can admit that. So I've been loving learning about these kinds of things or the power of confession. That's something that we've missed out, right? Right. So we want to encourage you this morning, be open-minded and participate. And if you have any more questions, I mean, ask the pro right here. (laughs) He's the Lent pro. Okay, so Charlie, thanks so much. That's been great, man. Thank you, Pastor (laughs) Carl. You're welcome. Man, that's awesome. Hope that you've uh, learned something uh, today and uh, we will see you on Sunday at 10 a.m. online on YouTube, okay? Take care. Bye. Bye.